Hello, everyone. Let me see if I can get my video going so we can all say hi. I love that about Zoom, so we can say hi ahead of time. How are you? Good. Good. Good, so, Barb, good to talk to you again, like twice in one day. What a treat. <laughs> good. And then Caroline, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Looking forward to having you with us in a couple of weeks back in California. I know. I'm excited. Well, you're in California now, right? It's, it's, it's so funny. It's, it feels like Southern California and Northern California are two different places. They are, actually. <laughs> they feel that way, don't they? Two different worlds. Two different yes, worlds. they are. Yeah, well, we've got to get our calendar synced because I'll be up there again in September. I think I've got four engagements. You know, we had to cancel quite a few uh, appearances when Scott got sick. So he just hopped up for that one uh, fundraiser that I was speaking out and then was up and down so quickly. So, right, yeah. right. It's so, okay. I'm sure I'm the only happen. person with video today. I'm sure it'll happen at some point. I'm yeah, gonna... I'm sure it will. I'm, I'm sure it will. That. All right, beautiful. So, Karen, welcome. You might be muted. Good to have you with us, Allison. I don't know who area code 780 is, but welcome. We're so glad you're here. And uh, before I get started, hi, Allison. Before I get started, does anybody have any burning questions? Nothing terribly urgent at this moment. Okay, cool. So what I'd like to do is just go over um, with you the kind of the purpose of this meeting and what why I called it together, and then we'll have it recorded. So if you have any questions, obviously you can go back and listen to the recording, but most importantly, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. So uh, that's, that's uh, what I'm here for. So hop over if nobody has any questions, and if you don't mind, I'm going to mute everybody because more people will be coming on. It always happens like this, you know, we're starting at the top of the hour, and um, my desire is to go through the material quickly, uh, not so quickly that you don't get it, but quickly enough that I can cover everything that I want to cover with you and then still leave lots of space and time for everybody for Q&A. So let me go down here to share my screen and let's see if I've got my PowerPoint set up. So many things to learn here. Good. We'll minimize you guys and start from the beginning. Slideshow from the beginning. Perfect. All right, beautiful. So you are in the right place if you came to visit me today because you wanted to talk about uh, three massive mistakes that have women business owners feeling stressed out, overwhelmed, and unprofitable. And you know what I find is that this is really the most common uh, complaint, challenge, uh, you know, place where women get stuck. It's not that men don't get stuck here as well. It's just that for women, I think because we're really uniquely designed to multitask, at least we think we are. Uh, you know, if we get the idea that, that back in the day we're supposed to be holding a baby while we're cooking and cleaning and doing all of this stuff all at one time, uh, somehow we take that into our businesses and it's not really serving us. So I want to really talk about today what to focus on, how to get yourself out of overwhelm when you are feeling, uh, you know, feeling overwhelmed, and then really how to move into a place where your business feels easy and profitable. So hopefully that will be things that, uh, hopefully I'm speaking to the right crowd. So um, this picture looks so scary to me now that I see it. <laughs> it's the business you started now running you. Uh, are you running your business or your business running you? Uh, all too often, you know, we start a business because we're super excited and passionate about something. We want to get into it. We want to really help others with our special powers and our, our talents. And then something happens and all of a sudden we lose sight of any kind of grace in our day. And, I'll, you know, it's like, what's the next thing I have to do in my business? And that doesn't feel graceful. It doesn't feel easy. So we're going to be asking yourself, you know, are you running your business or is your business running you? And uh, for those of you that have been in business for a while, I really want you to think about when was your last real vacation? What do I mean about a real vacation versus just a vacation? Um, there's too much going on. We're a little too connected all the time. And I think what happens, you know, when we're traveling is that now you've got the added stress of being in a new environment. And if you're trying to take a vacation, you're trying to still work. I think that that's a mistake. So when you be thinking about like, what would it look like if your calendar gave you the freedom to really take off 
and disconnect because what I know is that you are all very creative women, otherwise you wouldn't be entrepreneurs, right? Uh, if you are a follower, if you're a person who just really like to put, kind of follow the rules and do everything the same way everybody else does it, you wouldn't be on this training today. So part of this is, you know, this great blessing of being a creative being is that we've got to give ourselves time and space for the creativity to happen. And it doesn't happen when we're just in a grind, right? There's kind of this joke about how entrepreneurs are the only people that will work an 80 hour work week to get out of working a 40 hour week job. So if any of you can relate to that, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. So why you wanna get this handled is pretty simple, right? We wanna talk about how struggle keeps us from being creative. It's kind of what I was just saying, but struggling financially is a choice. It's a choice for us as women, it's a choice for us as business owners. I'm not here to say that anybody, you know, that there's a quick fix for this, but we can get it handled. And it's really why we do the work that we do to empower leaders like yourselves to get the tools that you need. Because once you are financially free, a woman is, I think the number is close to 80% more likely to give than a man when she reaches financial sufficiency. This is an important distinction for us as a community and as a tribe. Uh, it's not that I don't love working with men, it's that I know that women leaders are being called in a whole new way, in a way we haven't ever been called before. And the way we're gonna get it handled is by supporting one another. So that's why I'm hosting this webinar for you today so I can answer questions about kind of next steps and really help you to know where to be focused. Um, I don't want your health suffering, I don't want your relationships suffering, and I don't want you to have that empty feeling of, is this all there is, right? You know, it's, there's a lot of talk these days about purpose, and we feel this pulling and this need to be on purpose. You know, your purpose is already happening. I want you to not feel pressured around it, but it's hard to live our purpose if we're constantly putting out fires and moving in the wrong direction. So, when I say your purpose is already happening, if you're alive and breathing, you're on purpose. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. I just want you to do more of it and have it feel more graceful and more easy for you. And uh, this is a sweet one. It doesn't have to be so hard. What a concept. We, we tend to pressure ourselves and think that things have to be much harder than they have to be. So I want to give you some easy things to focus on today so that hopefully it helps lighten your load and gets you moving in the right direction. And my request to you is this. Um, you know, I've asked you to set aside an hour to be with me. We don't have to spend a whole hour. If you've got other things to do and you need to drop off, please do so. But while you're here, do yourself the favor of really disconnecting. So turn off your cell phone. I am, I'm looking around, I'm like, I don't even know where my cell phone is. So <laughs> that somebody will let me know if we start going over time. When I get off the slides, I'll be able to see what time it is. But, um, you know, there's something so powerful about actually reconnecting to yourself, reconnecting to why you're here, looking at your business and your life with fresh eyes. And it's hard to do when you're in the minutia of everyday living. So please don't be multitasking. It's not a service to you and you'll miss something. So just give yourself permission to just kind of disconnect from everything else and really be present to what we're going to talk about today. And I love to reduce things to the ridiculous. So some of you that have been with me for a little bit, you've seen this over and over again. Really, if I can think about like three easy steps for most things, I feel like I can get things done, right? Like not everything can be reduced to three, but a lot of things can. So you'll see that a lot in my work. Like what are the three things we can do? What are the, the three steps to take? What are the three distinctions in, in place? And I'm not trying to do that to uh, dumb down the material by any stretch of the imagination, but sometimes when life is really full, and we know, okay, this is what I can do today. This is what's important today. We're making motion in the right direction. And, you know, that saying about Rome wasn't built in a day. None of us build businesses overnight. It takes a little time. But doing the consistency and doing the right actions that actually help us uh, make it work for you very easily. So if you're new to my world, and some of you are, uh, welcome. So happy to have you with us. And for those of you that are already part of our family, thank you for coming to spend time with me today. I'm looking forward to supporting you. Um, where I come from a little bit of experience with this is that I married into a family business. This is a picture of me dressed as a wench when I was 23 years old. I worked in many capacities in the restaurant business as a waitress, as a cashier, as a bartender, uh, as the bookkeeper, as a cook sometimes. Whatever needed to be done, I was doing that. And it was not a sustainable way to do business, although many people do run their restaurants that way. At some point, you hit a ceiling. And we were you know, on track at one point with 28 employees and we had a multi-million dollar business. So we had to really quickly learn as our business was growing how to move out of the minutia of every day and how to really move into the places that we enjoyed as business 
business owners. When I moved to, I, from that restaurant, I opened up two more restaurants called Field of Greens, and we sold those as well. We sold the first business to our, the, our existing family members, our existing family members, our other family members that were business partners, then opened Field of Greens and uh, sold those, then moved to Arizona and quickly got into real estate and started in real estate sales, then moved into real estate development and eventually real estate investing, which is where I've made a lot of money and been very, very grateful to have that as a stream of passive income for our family. And uh, then my husband said to me one day, you know, I want to do something to tap into the tourist business. Sedona in its heyday had, you know, over 3 million tourists every year. Some statistics said 4 million, but I just, you know, such a tiny town millions of people, let's just call it that, coming through this little town. And we came up with the idea of creating a tasting room, the art of wine that specialized in Arizona wines. And uh, even without really knowing the power of niche at that point, it was very, very successful. Uh, we went on to open another location from that business. We opened up a designer clothing boutique because we sold $140,000 worth of clothing out of that little tasting room in six months, which was a clue to kind of follow that lead and, and uh, open up another business. I owned a tanning salon that I started, uh, I, got, I kind of got into with in partnership with another friend and then bought her out and then uh, our winery business. So people ask sometimes, you know, what exactly are the businesses? And a lot of times I zip through this part. And I think, you know, the piece that I'll tell you is that that's been my own experience. And what you don't see on here is, is the work that I've been doing now for almost five years, Legacy Leaders Global where I'm working as a philanthropist with nonprofits, helping them to scale their companies. And I think I've created a slide around that as well. Um, so kind of concurrently while I was doing my, sorry about that, while I was doing my for-profit work, I was volunteering in the nonprofit sector. And so now my current company, Legacy Leaders Global, we really focus on, I spend about half my time working in the nonprofit sector. And I do that as a volunteer as I can. That's my talent that I can offer them. And then in the for-profit sector, I partner with women who are business owners that are really committed to using their business as a vehicle to give back, to really create massive change. So for those of you who've been with me for a while, I apologize for the you know, biography here, but I wanted to bring it up to speed for people that are gonna be watching this in the future that haven't uh, been a part of our community yet and that are curious about you know, who I am and where do I come with this kind of life experience. So um, I would say that this is really um, a very tender time for me right now. Uh, my husband just recently had, four weeks ago, had an emergency bypass, quadruple bypass surgery, and uh, had chest pains for several months before we got to the emergency room. He went to several different doctors, and they were doing the best they could with what they had. Uh, but what ended up happening is that when he went in for the catheterization, where they actually injected dye into his heart to see what was going on, they found that the main artery to the back of his heart was 100% blocked. And... Um, and they, I had to have a conversation, you know, with a cardiologist saying, what do you want to do? You can go home and he'll die. I mean, was, he kind of said it a little nicer than that, but not much. Um, or we can do bypass surgery and it's bad. It's not, uh, it's not like a small thing. This is a pretty intensive thing and his body's not strong enough. So we're going to need to admit him into intensive care and we're going to have to watch him until, as long as it takes uh, before we can actually do the surgery. So we my obvious choice was to actually have him admitted. And then um, we sat in intensive care for five days before they were able to do the surgery. Um, but what I, I think what I want to bring to you in this is that the most precious uh, experience that I've had in this most recent time with this adventure was sitting in the emergency room. Well, actually, there's a couple of precious ones because uh, I'll tell you this, this one first, but uh, sitting in the emergency room with him and having him look at me and say, you know, if this is it, I'm good. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you know, we've traveled all over the world. We've raised our children well. They're happy, healthy, great people. And, uh, you know, madly in love. And we've just had this incredible, incredible adventure with each other. And uh, so if God's taking me, uh, I'm good. And so that was really, you know, not an easy thing to hear. But at the same time, it was pretty thought provoking for me. And then I said, well, if it's not the end, then what would you like to see happen? What, you know, is there any place you want to go? Is there anything you want to do? And he said, you know, not really. He said, you know, really, I just want more of the same. So today when I finish with you guys, we're heading to Arizona uh, to our house there and we'll be with our oldest son, Scotty, uh, this week. So it's the piece that I'm sharing with you is not so much about my personal what's happening. It's more about you know, I really want you to consider what your why is. I was fixing the slides and clearly <laughs> my why is a little cut off, but that's what it says here. What is your why? Um, 
what would be the reason for doing the work that you're doing? And, and I think it's super important to know that. And it's important to stay present to it so that as life is happening, because, you know, our current version of, of the wake-up call is, is just what we are currently in. Each of you has your own version of what's been happening in your life. And uh, there's something that compelled us to have the courage to get out and hang our shingle and, and go into the businesses that we have. And more things keep showing up for us. Uh, we've got to really strengthen ourselves and we need to be together and we need to be in community to support one another as life is happening, uh, which is why we're doing this work together today. So just be thinking about, you know, why am I doing what I'm doing? Because it's something that helps, I believe, when the overwhelm kicks in. And there's nothing like having, uh, you know, a loved one be really, really incapacitated. You really, at this point, it's been almost a month that he hasn't been able to drive. He can't pick anything up. You know, he really hasn't been able to take care of himself. And life is still happening, right? So for each of you, I want you to be thinking about, you know, kind of the preciousness of the people in your life and why you're doing what you're doing uh, so that it holds you in a strong place as you move forward. Um, I would say my, my great gift also in doing this work, uh, not only have I been blessed to be very successful in several businesses, uh, while I raise my family, but now that my kiddos are grown up, being able to take my daughter with me to Africa and do work in the jungle, in the rainforest with women, and use my time and my talents to help nonprofits really get out there and make a difference, as well as for profits and create this partnership has been uh, you know, a great blessing for me. So I want you to think about in your own world, if we get you to a place where you reach financial sufficiency, whatever that looks like for you, and we do an event each year, it's coming up next month called Flow. It's a once a year event. It's an invitation only event for a small group of women who want to come together. It's a fundraiser. We're raising funds for the Power of Love Foundation, which provides microfinance loans for women in Zambia. If you want to come play with us, please let me know. I'll, I'll give you all my contact information at the end of the at the end of the presentation. Uh, but you know, if you're a person who's feeling like, yeah, me too, this is what I want to be doing, you know, please reach out and let's have a conversation and see if you might want to come join our community because uh, we're up to some good things as a as a family. All right, so let's look at you. Let's look at how you can have your business work for you instead of you having your business run you, right? How can we get you in focused on the areas that you need to be focused on? First and foremost, I'm a bit of a systems geek and I've been asked for years again and again and again, how do you do it? And I don't know what it is exactly, but when they ask a better question of like, how do you actually have time for your family? How do you get to travel around the world? How do you get to do the work that you love? I always come back to systems. Systems are the secret to your success. I will not go into it too much in this webinar, but if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one call with me, I'll kind of go over with you where I want you to focus on systems because every business and every industry, not just the businesses that I currently own, but the thousands of businesses that I've had the honor of serving and supporting as I've stepped into my work uh, doing leadership work now is really, there's the same thing over and over again. Like what are the systems and where do we need to focus? And finance is one of them. We're going to go into it right now. Um, as of obviously, if you're feeling like you're overwhelmed, usually there's a correlation here between time and money not really working in your favor. So I want to support you with some tools to make that happen. Let me take a drink of tea. Excuse me for a second. All right, so the first thing I tell you is that the number one mistake that I see women business owners make over and over and over again is being distracted. There's so much going on in the world and it's just, you know, you've got to learn to have a unilateral focus. And I think, again, I, I, I get challenged sometimes about, is it like this for men and women? Really, it's different for us. I think we're made to be, uh, again, very attentive in lots of different directions, but it's not our strength always. What we need to really learn to do is hone our focus and get super crystal clear on the things that make our business successful. Because once you have a successful business that's running and it's actually a business, you're not a self-employed person. You actually have a company that has team and it's providing consistent recurring revenue for you. You've got all the freedom in the world to do what you want, but it does take some time and some focus. And so I really want to talk today about, again, generating revenue. I come back to this again because without the fuel, nowadays we have Teslas and Priuses and things that run on electricity, but for most vehicles, we need fuel. We need fuel for the fire. We need fuel for our business. And money is that in our business. We've got to really get clear about how to generate revenue. Otherwise, we have a very expensive hobby, and I hope you know what I mean. We can literally spend years thinking about a business, trying to build a business, 
being self-employed and only making money if we're doing the work, but it's not the same thing as being a business owner. When you're truly a business owner, you have an entity and a structure that runs without you and that generates revenue, right? Revenue is directly related to the service it's providing. So I want you guys to be with me on thinking about how can I provide more service and be a business owner, not a self-employed person. So here's one of my one, two, threes, and it's really the place of clarity. When you're out in the world looking at providing your services or your products, what I want you to really be thinking about who you serve, what they're struggling with, and what the unique solution you create together in partnership. So a lot of times people will say, well, you know, that's, it doesn't work like that in my business. We're all in the people business. Even if you sell a product, you're in the people business. We've got to figure out who it is that you are targeting, what they're struggling with. I mean, even if you, pardon my expression, but even if you're selling salads, if you're selling Chick-fil-A, whatever it is, there's a person that's your avatar. They have a challenge. Maybe they're hungry. They want a certain type of food. They want expediency, but the solution is what it is. So don't get hung up on it doesn't work like that in my world. It works like this in all businesses. All businesses provide solutions to problems. And the more we can stay focused in that arena, the more targeted our, our message becomes and the more effective our business becomes. What happens again with the distraction world is we move back into all the different things we could be doing. And I promise you, if you will have the discipline to hone these three things and really stay with me in rinsing and repeating and doing it again and again and again, you'll find that your revenue is there. All right, revenue generating activity, short and sweet, marketing and sales. Marketing and sales drive revenue for companies. And marketing is a place where we nurture people, where we build relationships. Sales is where we actually earn the business of a client by doing a service for them or providing them a product that provides a solution to their problem. Revenue generating activities are not something you get to do sometimes. There's some things that you have to do every day. They're not a kind of sort of thing. They're an all the time thing, okay? So I want you to be thinking about what revenue generating activities can you be doing daily? And if you need help with that, that's a good place to reach out and ask me. All right, so if you are in a position where you feel like you might have your revenue stuck in your business, I want you to ask yourself, could you be the problem? We're asking it gently here, could you be the bottleneck? Could you be the issue here? 99% of the time when I see a business not being successful, it's there's a mindset shift that needs to happen in the leadership. That's why our company is Legacy Leaders Global. If I can get to you and kind of help you step into your leadership and step into what you actually need to be doing to create a successful recurring revenue, it's great. The challenge is getting you out of this bottleneck and getting you not distracted by the things that you're normally spending time on sometimes takes us years. I know what my dear friend Barb is on this call and she and I've been working together for five years and you know, we all have our own variation of the theme, but it's easy to get stuck in what we know. So thank you for being open-minded and listening to maybe there's another way to do things and maybe there's a place I want to get out and learn more. Ignorance is not an option. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is you have to pay attention to your revenue. I was speaking to a client yesterday and I was asking a question about, you know, how many clients she had and what her revenues were and she didn't know. And that's okay because you may not always know, but I promise you this, people who are hugely successful financially are so because they pay attention to, their, to the, what matters, right? They pay attention to tracking what's coming, what they're doing. So the activities that you're doing, if you come and play with us at Flow, one of the things that we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a list of all the things that you need to be tracking daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually. Uh, you know, this tracking sheet is something that's really priceless. And what it does is it really helps you. Like again, how many telephone calls am I making? How many reach outs am I getting done? How many prospects have I spoken to? How many invitations have I made? And then if you even have just a trickle of money coming in, like let's say that you have passive revenue or you have money coming in from a partnership, still paying attention to that, learning to track your money, paying attention to your money, learning how to categorize your money, is so important, it's priceless. It's one of the reasons why we host the Flow event is so that we can really give you the tools you need for financial leadership. Because again, whatever your business is, whether you're providing a product or a service, or you're an auditor, or you're an author, or you're a speaker, or you're a coach, or you're a CPA, or you're a doctor, you still have to learn how to track your money. And most of us don't come out of the womb knowing how to do this. So I wanna help you learn how to do it. And then I want you to be thinking about some things around your revenue are you spending money to make money 
You've got to be very clear. We can spend a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of energy on the wrong things. I want you to be really aggressive and assertive and thoughtful about this. Are the dollars you're investing, dollars that we're going to give, bring you a return on investment? Are you learning a skill that you need to run your company better? Are you gaining a new uh, tool or resource for your company that's going to actually streamline things and automate things so that you can be freed up? Are you hiring a key employee or a key team member so that you can, again, have your own time freed up? And then if you do that, are you disciplined enough to do the actions that create revenue? So there's really three ways to build wealth. It's not just simply about making more money. You have to learn to save more of what you make. And I think, again, that's part of the discernment of financial leadership and why we spend two and a half days working on it each year, because it's one of the main pillars of business is financial leadership requires making more money saving what you have and then growing what you have so that you can increase. So if you guys can see me, you have this idea, the ceiling of how much money comes in and then we spend money. But the space between here is the profitability of your business. I see way too many businesses that are making money. They focus on making, 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 but they're spending as much as they're making. So there's no profit, right? We've got to really learn how to make and save, keep our expenses low and then grow what we have so that this keeps growing. Are you with me? Yeah, good. So, if you decide to come play with us at Flow, I just keep telling you a little bit about it because it's coming up. We have three live events each year. But this one really focuses on revenue generating activities, which is really the place where I see time freedom come for all business owners. And we're going to talk to you about how to fall in love with sales. I'm doing uh, several live training calls prior to the event where we really get in and deep dive on the sales process because I can promise you this, if you're alive and breathing, you need to get better at sales. We all have to keep increasing this skill set and because it just really works. It matters and it's the way that we get to be of service. There's nothing more heartbreaking than meeting somebody. And I'm thinking about somebody recently who invited me to attend an event and I really wanted to go, right? It was somebody I wanted to see. I was like, gosh, it was like where I wanted to be. And I wanted to do it. And I kept asking, could you give me some information? And then crickets, nothing. And then I reached out to them again. You know, they're trying to sell me on something, right? And I'm like, okay, well, I really want to go, but I need to have some information. Is there a website? Crickets. Then this person sends me like travel information. I said, okay, well, that's great, but you haven't really told me what I'm asking for, which is what is it that's happening at the event? I need to know the dates, the time, where am I going to be, what hotel? I mean, these kind of things. I want to promise you this. So many of us lose sales because we're not listening when our prospect is telling us what we, what they want, right? We've got to learn to really listen and ask effective questions, but pay attention, right? There's a whole thing around, we did with this morning with legacy leaders around being mindful. What are the practices of being mindful? Mindfulness works everywhere in your life. And when you're starting to pay attention, you can hear this. The sales process is something that can be fantastic and joyous and fun. And if you're interested in, again, learning more, I'm happy to share it with you. Uh, but it's one of those things where falling in love with sales is a huge bonus to your business and to your life. All right, let's move on to massive mistake number two. And if you've got any questions about massive mistake number one, about revenue generating activities, please write them down. And when we finish the slides, and I'll open up for Q&A and uh, happy to answer any questions for you. So massive mistake number two is this, no one succeeds alone. If you see this beautiful girl, we think she's a beautiful girl, she's got beautiful hair, uh, looking at the end of the pier and it's, you know, good luck, good luck getting there. Um, it's really a fantasy, this idea of the lone wolf, that somehow, you know, we are going to do it because nobody else can do it as well as we can, that we're going to do it because we can do it faster or better. I promise you, no matter what your business is, if you are not feeling relaxed and graceful and easy, there's a challenge and most of the time is that you're not allowing yourself to be supported. You've got to learn how to build a dream team. Uh, I, I found this today, this two kids. I was looking for a picture of myself with like Gina and Andrea and Brenda from an event, but I couldn't really find it. But I thought this is so cute, right? We all have our own superpowers, but our superpowers are different than other people, right? Like I don't know all of these characters, but you think about this with me, you know, Wonder Woman in her golden lasso has a certain superpower. Superman has a certain superpower, which is different than Batman's superpower. I don't see Spider-Man on here. He has another superpower of like swinging from <laughs> buildings. I always love those movies. Um, but think about when you're building your dream team, 
you have to know what your superpowers are so you know where to hire. I can tell you for myself, my superpower is I am super creative and I generate very quickly a lot of content and material, but I'm not great at putting it into technology and systems so that my community can follow up with it. Right. So I have to surround myself with people that really love detail. And sometimes I do a good job with that and sometimes I don't. Um, but for the most part, creating those systems allows us to allows me to have the freedom to really bring my talents to the world, to really enjoy my conversations, to enroll the people that are meant to be part of our tribe with each other, get them connected. I mean, one of my most favorite things to do is to make warm connections for people, meet someone and then say, hey, you need to know this person because there's something, again, it's, it's beautiful for us as women as we find that we're not alone and that there's somebody else like us that has a similar superpower or a complementary superpower. So I think, again, as women, there's that great connectivity that we have, and I love being able to do that, but I've got to have somebody else behind me picking up the minutia, otherwise I'm not going to deliver my promises, right? So think about in your own world what you're great at and what you like to do, and then think about all the things that you know, just telling yourself. Usually where those things are is where you're procrastinating. If there's something you're procrastinating on, it may be that it's not in your wheelhouse. It may not be your superpower. So let me help you find somebody who is great at doing that and let's make it easy. All right, so one of the objections that I hear, and I'm not trying to overwhelm you because this is a course about how to get out of overwhelm, but one of the things that I hear is like, I can't find good people. I want you guys to know that for almost 20 years, we lived in Sedona, Arizona, and our home is in Cornville. That's where we're heading this afternoon towards Cornville. We're gonna stop overnight, but, um, Cornville is a little town of like 500 people. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. And I've built multi, multi-million dollars in business out of this little town. So now that I live in Southern California, Scott and I constantly are like, oh my gosh, it's so easy. Everything's so easy. It's like you get in the car and boom, anything you want to eat is right there. Get in the car, boom, anything you want to buy is right there. Boom, there's the beach. I mean, it's like everything's easy. I want you to think about this for your own self. If there's a place where you're not allowing yourself to be supported, if you're trying to do everything yourself, is there a mindset shift in there? It may or may not be yours. Maybe this could be just one of the objections, but is there something in there where you feel like I can't find anyone to help me? Because I hear it frequently from people. So if it's there, I want you to stop thinking that way. If you think I can't find anybody that's actually that unique person who I'm uniquely qualified to serve, I promise you, you're just not thinking big enough and you're not allowing yourself to be supported. So please, let's have a conversation and let's look at how do we help you find the people that you are uniquely designed to support. When you do, it's so easy. It's so wonderful. You have the conversation. You have these commonalities. There's synchronicity. It's beautiful. When you're building team, when you know what you're looking for, when you're clear on the vision, mission of your company, and it's not always easy when you're just getting started, but when you've been in business for a while, and you need to find team members, you've got to keep your head in the game and understand there are literally billions of humans and we've never had the opportunity we have right now of the gig economy. What I mean by that is that you can literally have people work for you that live all over the world and it's not difficult and there's ways to have checks and balances and there's ways to have support, but it takes a little bit of slowing down on our part as leaders to really allow this to come through. All right, so I apologize to those of you that are not in the United States. Well, for all my pictures of the Benjamins, but you guys know what the green backs look like. Money is money is money. Your team makes you money. Your team does not cost you money. The second objection that I hear all the time from women when they're not building their companies and they're not scaling and they're feeling overwhelmed is how am I going to afford this? I want you to shift that question from how am I going to afford this to who can help me, right? Who can help me get this done? And how can that person add value? When we hire people, we look for them to not only pay for themselves, but to generate exceptional amounts of free time for me and for the leadership of our company, and also to generate revenue. So I want you to be thinking that your team makes you money, not how am I going to pay for this? All right. Create systems around everything that you do. Now, why am I telling you this? If you are a person who is suffering from overwhelm, right, the promise of this was to help you get out of overwhelm, Stop being unprofitable in your business and move to a profitable place. Stop being stressed out. We're stressed out because we think about too many things at one time. When we start reducing things to the ridiculous, we start really simplifying our lives. I want you to think this. For most of us, the most important thing we need to do is pay attention to our health, number one, and yet we don't until something's not working. Okay? 
You just don't. Then we look at like, how do I take care of my family? We don't take care of our family a lot of the times in the way that we would if we had time freedom until we have a crisis, right? We have a breakdown in our relationship with our children, with our partners, because we're not giving it the attention that it deserves. We have a breakdown in our revenue, our breakdown in our money because we're not paying attention. I want you to really think about where are the places in your life that matter? For me, those places are health, wealth, love, and having the time to enjoy them is really our motto. That's really what our company stands for. It's what my work is all about. How do I actually have those things matter? And the work that's purposeful drives the freedom. So when things are reduced to the ridiculous, you know, this is the systems, how you eat, how you exercise, how you sleep, how you do your business. I mean, one of the things you guys will see if you set up a time to have a chat with me is that when you go into my link, everything's automated, you go into my link, it'll show you availability for me to have a telephone call with you Monday through Thursday between one and four. It didn't start that way, right? And then people think, well, that means that I only work you know, 12 hours a week. Well, some weeks I don't work at all. I haven't worked much at all in the last month. But when I am available, I'm very clear about being in a system in a time frame that where my energy is high and I can really focus on solving your problems and supporting you. And those are the times that I'm speaking, but I do it at one o'clock in the afternoon. So I have lots of time to take care of myself and my family first. Okay. The other thing to think about is if you have a business right now that's up and running and your business was to scale, meaning that you, you know, we call this kind of like the Oprah effect. You got an Oprah and all of a sudden your business had 10 times the orders come in. Who would be helping you with that? Right? Who would be fulfilling those orders? If the purpose of your business is actually to provide your product or service to people, if you've got a big influx of orders, could you have the capacity? I want you to be thinking about where you're going, not where you are, because that's part of the places where you get stuck. All right, so when we know better, we can do better. If you're a solopreneur and you're on this and you're just watching this for, for like your first introduction to me, this is not going to make a whole lot of sense when you see this org chart. But I want you to really think about the fact that every industry has to have great leadership. Every company, every business has to have a leader. They have to have a person who's visionary at the top, paying attention to the details, not doing the details, but holding the vision for the organization. And then the organization needs to have revenue. We've talked quite a bit about this so that it can be profitable. The finance division, there are people who have to be in place to have finance be operating. You have to have operations. You have to have the way of delivering the promise, delivering the service, creating your products and services that has to happen. You have to have somebody in sales and marketing who is actually moving the driver to create finance for your company. And then when you start to grow, who is managing team? You don't want it to be you. You want to have you overseeing these different moving parts, but you don't want to be doing them yourself. So this is a fill in the blank org chart. And uh, if you want a copy of it, just let me know when we get to the end, I'll give you my contact information and you can send me a note and I'll, I'll give you a link where you can go grab a free copy of this. But what I want you to look at is where are you going? If you are currently just a solopreneur, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you're just the person starting your business, or you have a team of two or three people, and you're filling in the blanks with your name and your VA's name in every box, that's okay. We all start small. But I want you to look for where you're going to grow into and who would you need to hire because when you have a listing for that, you'll start to find those idea people. They'll start to show up in your world and be thinking about like who could do this better. It's not me. This is not my job to be the uh, internet marketing guru or to learn how to design websites. This is not my superpower. Who could help me do that and who would be great at doing that, right? How do I find those people? So I want you to think about scaling and growing into the business owner that you want to be and not get hung up on the minutia where you are right now. All right, here's massive mistake number three for women business owners. And I know it seems simple, but it's really not. And it matters. And that's quite simply self-care. Self-care is non-negotiable. It's not an issue to think about as a luxury. It's something that has to be done. We all have to do it. I promise you with what's been happening in my family over the last month, it has been fairly graceful because of my self-care. It's been fairly graceful because of my team. It's been fairly graceful to watch my husband while he was in intensive care, Skyping with our adult daughter who's in Argentina and knowing that their relationship is healthy and well because they communicate consistently on a regular basis and they work at their relationship. It wasn't always that way. Okay. The well has to be full. 
the things that matter have to get your attention so that when life throws you a curveball, you're ready. Okay, when you have, when you are faced with 12 hour days or 15 hour days or that 10x thing comes in and you now have 10 times the orders you've ever had, you're gonna have to get into action and have the endurance. It's a bit like being an athlete. You know, being an entrepreneur is a bit like being an athlete. But the way you win the race is slow and steady and being in habits and practices all the time that keep you strong and present and really, really viable for when life comes in. So here's my acronym for self-care. And again, if you want any of this information, I'm going to tell you how to get in touch with me. Um, but this is what it is for me, you know, just short and sweet. Sleep has to happen. Seems simple, seems kind of dumb to say it, but it's really the truth. You've got to sleep. I just read a study that said that if you uh, are operating a motor vehicle, if you're driving on four hours of sleep, four to five hours of sleep, you have the same chance, I think it's four times as likely to have an automobile accident uh, as if you've had an eight hour sleep. And that is the same statistic as if you're drunk. So think about sleepless driving is the same as drunk driving, don't do it, okay? Do you wanna make decisions in your life and your business with no sleep? The answer is no, you have to sleep, make it a priority, do not let anything interrupt this. And again, you and I could talk privately about the things to do, but you know, sleeping is non-negotiable. Exercise, you do not have to be out there running if you're not a runner. My sweet guy has got to walk six times a day now to keep his heart in shape to live. It's not a joke. Really, literally, what he could do when we were in the hospital was get out of his bed and walk to the door and walk back. And that's about what he could do. You know, this is a strong, virile man. And he looks so good on the outside and his heart was falling apart on the inside. He did not have an exercise. He did not have a daily exercise practice. Make it daily. Make it something, even if it is literally getting out and walking around the block. Do something to move your blood, to move your lymph so your body can heal itself. Letting go, let go of anything that is not yours. And I want you to ask yourself, is this really a priority? Is this really mine? And learn to trust your stomach. If you are feeling sick to your stomach or you're feeling tightness, this is your body's indication that it's not for you. Please put it on the burner, okay? Or run it by me. Say, Laura, is this really my job? Who can help me to do this, right? I'm going to be thinking as a leader, as a business owner, who can help me to do this, okay? Fuel, it's not complicated, you guys. Again, our body needs live food, which means it needs fruits and vegetables. Get those things in, get them out of the way. Every morning when I'm in my flow and I'm in my routine, my, my day starts with a shake that I make with protein and fresh fruit. Then for lunch every day, I have a big, big salad with protein again, because protein keeps me slim and it keeps me fueled and it keeps my, me from getting the crazy hungers. But I do that every day before I start my work, right? Work starts at one o'clock for us on the telephone calls. In the evening, I can eat whatever I want. But think about your own system. What does your body need? What's the fuel that it needs? And please create some kind of very boring, very consistent system to make that happen. Community. Please allow yourself to be supported. You're here. You know, I'm, I'm offering to have a conversation with you. I'm not trying to sell you something. If you're meant to work with me and we're meant to work together, it happens very gracefully, I promise you this. If you come and hang out in our community and you're new in our world, you'll be amazed at how easy it is. That's why we teach a course called Sales with Ease. There's no pressure here. Community is something that I see that is vital. It's especially important for women. And we, too many of us spend too much time in isolation. Spend too much time behind a computer by ourselves, not allowing ourselves to receive support. If you don't learn to ask for what you need, and then you block receiving when somebody tries to do something nice for you, you're like, oh no, I'm going to wait until I'm ready, or I'm going to wait until I'm big enough, or I'm going to wait until it's the, you know, the moon is full, and maybe they have an agenda. You know, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Be a good receiver. Receiving is a form of giving. So if somebody's trying to give you a gift, please be kind and receive the gift and take it in and allow yourself to be supported because again, nobody's going to make it on their own. You've got to have team. You've got to have community around you. And that's where all the ease lies. That's where the grace lies. And that's where the freedom lies. And really for me, you know, the idea of you having time freedom and financial freedom when you're a person who cares about making a difference 
you are my tribe, you are my community, and that's why we're doing this work, is we have a whole planet of people that don't have access to resources. So the faster we can get our stuff together, the quicker we can get out and make a difference for people who don't have access, right? And I, you know, I just posted this on Facebook and in my, in my newsletter that I recently heard that there are two types of people in the world, women and children of women. Rosalind Francois, who's one of our legacy leaders, told me that. And I said, man, that's a good quote women and children of women we're all exactly like you guys so we've got to be together and support each other to make great things happen all right and here it is again in case i didn't say it loud and proud learn to let go of the things that don't serve you all right so if you are in a situation right now where you're procrastinating on things you need to do it's causing you to have overwhelm and stress please stop all right, schedule the time. One of the things that we do is we don't have to-do lists in our world. We have project management software, which I'll talk to you about if you're in an organization, you're working with multiple team members, quit making yourself crazy trying to chase email. It doesn't work. We all fall into the trap, myself included, and get your projects written out someplace where you can see them. If there's something you haven't done that you know you need to do, I want you to ask yourself, who can help me get this done? Okay. And it lets you and I have a telephone call about how to find those people. If you're undercharging for your services, if you're not having a great return on investment for your time and energy, I want to have a telephone call with you to talk about how you can find more value. And let's figure out how to actually have you know it so that you can share it with others. If you feel like you don't have control of your time, if you are a person who finds that you're getting to the end of the day and you're not getting things done, something's not working here. All right. When time and money are not working for you and you're only getting by financially, it's an indicator that there's something to fix. It doesn't mean that you're broken. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. It means that maybe you have some, some tools missing and it's my pleasure to help you because as a leader of a business, you have to step into your power. I want you to be thinking about the version of yourself. If you were running a $2 million business, would you be doing the same activities? If you had a company that was bringing in $2 million a year, $5 million a year, would you be doing the same activities? And for most of you, the answer is no. Okay. I want you to step into that version of yourself now, and I want to help you have the support and the resources to make that happen. So here's my link to my personal calendar. It's a bit.ly, so you type in www.bitly.com forward slash Lori Gisborne 20 min call, M-I-N, min call. And you guys, the you in my community, you have this, but write it down again. Bitly.com, Laura Giz, 20 minute call. Laura Gisborne, 20 minute call. And then my personal email address is laura at lauragisborne.com. Please don't put me on your marketing list with this email address. If you want to have your marketing materials come to me, I'll give you a different email address. This is one of the reasons that I don't have overwhelm with email, is I have all of my marketing materials go into a specific email address. And this email address I use for friends, family, clients. And this is the only place that I really work. And I get about, you know, somewhere between 12 emails, you know, 12 to 20 emails a day, which is not bad considering I have multiple companies. It's kind of fascinating, actually. But I just am not interested in having junk mail. I'm interested in only working on the things that are fantastic and that I'm excited to do. And I want that to be the same experience for you. So write to me if I can help you with that. And if you're interested in finding out more about our flow retreat, um, this is the URL to find this. We, we haven't done any kind of marketing or advertising for flow. We're almost full at this point. Um, but I do have a few spaces for some key women that are uh, really clear about using their businesses, getting their finances in order, and changing, you know, this paradigm of it has to be so hard. You know, really wanting to step into flow and grace and ease and coming together to share ideas. Uh, it's a pretty juicy, it's a pretty juicy environment. So we're going to get together for two and a half days in La Jolla and share business ideas, like I said, and, and the flow of it will be really gentle because we like that. So we start on Wednesday afternoon from two to five. We have a few hours and we have networking time to really get to know each other and enjoy some, some good company. Uh, we start the next day at 10 in the morning so that everybody can sleep in, uh, just really take care of yourself, take care of your business so that we can really, again, get to the place where you can disconnect, you can reconnect and be there and really get filled up with exactly what you need. And uh, you know that's the way we like to play. So the question I'd like to ask you now is what would you be doing if time and money were no longer a concern? You know, what would you be doing differently in your life? And for some of you, you're doing exactly what you'd be doing. So congratulations, you're living your ideal life and that's awesome. But if you're not, and there's a place that we can support you in getting there, I want you to have that, you know, please receive 
the invitation to have a call with me and let's get you going. Let's get you focused. Let's get you on track with the things that might be holding you back, right? Because we don't know what we don't know. My friend Tracy says, you can't see your own eyebrows. I'm trying, but I can't, you know, it's like, that's it. We're in our own worlds. We're in our own bodies. So um, this very sweet picture, actually. Oh God, I have a cute story to tell you. Do you have time for me to tell you a cute story? So, so sweet because this is in Africa. This is in Zambia. And, um, and I went to church uh, with a woman that's on the right with me. Her name is Esther. And I said, and the, and the minister was in the front of the room and we were singing. I mean, it was like the greatest church experience. It was so great. If you can imagine, if, if you've been to Africa, or you know the people of Africa, the music of Africa, if you've heard the music of Africa, like to get in church, it was kind of like my Southern Baptist hymnals on crack. I mean, it was just like so expanded and like amazing. And I was singing along and I knew all the words, even though I had no idea what I was saying. I, my soul knew what to sing, right? It was beautiful. So then the minister said to Esther, he said, Esther, you brought a friend today you know, because we're sitting up in the front of the room. And I said to her later, I said, how do you think he knew I was a friend? How did you think I knew I was a guest? <laughs> he said, well, look at you. <laughs> I was standing out a little bit. But anyway, it was such a beautiful gift. And I was just really like, oh, I just, you know, if I ever feel, um, if I ever feel scarce, you know, like sometimes it happens for all of us, right? I can just tune back into feeling that warmth and hearing that music and feeling that love and having that incredible gift of an opportunity to be there as a guest, as a redheaded stepchild, and it's mind blowing, right? So I want that for you. Whatever your version of that is, I want that for you. You know, I really want you connecting and experiencing this life of your dreams and the life that's sometimes way better than you can dream, uh, but it requires us getting you strong, you know, strong financially and really time free. So, um, I gave you this information already. Uh, I'll say this. Oh, this is actually, let me kind of go back to this one piece. So if you decide to come, each of us as, as participants in the flow retreat and each of you that are joining the sales with ease training with me right now, um, you are by joining this program, sponsoring a woman in Zambia to start a micro loan, to start her own business. And it's a hard thing for us to fathom that we can do this for such a small amount of money. But the repayment rate, I think at this point is like 97%. And these women are doing amazing things and they're starting with a small dollar amount, starting their own companies and then supporting their families and then hiring team and doing the same thing that you and I are talking about here. They're doing it in Zambia and they're changing the faces of their families, right? Their, their children are going from having, you know, maybe, maybe one meal a day to having two to three great meals a day. Their children are being able to go to school. They don't get to go to school for free. They have to pay to go to school, right? So we're, we're, we're providing that by supporting fellow women. And, and just as we start to see our community growing in a global way, uh, I'm so thrilled to share that with you if it's, if it's important for you uh, to be a part of it. I'd love to have you be a part of it with us because uh, it's a very juicy place to play. The gift is in the giving for sure. All right, so I think those are all my slides. There my, there's my information again. If you want to have a chat, please reach out to me. Um, you can find me on Facebook if you found out about this webinar through Facebook. Obviously, we're connected, so uh, you know, send me a message and let's have a chat. And at that point, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and those of you beautiful diehard friends that stayed on. Oh, Abbasiyama, you're with us. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, Abbasiyama is here from Africa. Um, so exciting. I don't know if you can see me, but I can't see you guys. So um, a few of you, I can see your screen. I can see your pictures. And there's too many people for me to see everybody. So uh, I apologize for that. But, uh, but I'm so happy that you're here. Even if I can't see you, I'm so thrilled that you're here. Thank you for making time to be with us. And what I'm going to do to keep it easy peasy for everybody is... Um, is go to the chat. So in your, uh, if you're able to go to chat and just type in, if you have a question, then I'll unmute you. Because if I unmute everybody, there's gonna be a lot of background noise. So do you have a, if you just have a, a quick question for me about the three massive mistakes, I didn't do a great recap on this, right? The first mistake, if I can remember what I what I did, was, uh, was really around, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. What was the first massive mistake? Not paying attention to revenue generating activities. Right, like really getting clear about what they are and how to pay attention to them and what you need to be doing on a daily basis. The second one was not allowing yourself to be supported, right? Really having a fear about building a team of people around you. And I promise you again, that can be done for free, for low cost, for no cost. There's lots of ways to build team and community around you. And we've got lots of technology to help you with that. So I'm super happy to help you with that if I may. And then of course, the third one is not taking care of ourselves and not having a well that's full so that we can be really present and mindful when life happens, right? Really having that. Um, 
uh, Allison, do I have, you're, you're writing to me. I actually am leaving uh, as soon as we finish today, sweetie. So could you do me a favor? Let me put it in here again. Would you do me a favor? And see, will any of my times work for you with work? Are you able to get on a call with me? They're not. Okay. Um, then just send me a quick email, Allison. Let me put my email address in here and give me a few times that work for you. Okay, because you're going to be on the call with us Wednesday night, right? We're going to have a flow call. We can talk then. But if you want to talk to me personally, give me a few times that work for you either in the morning, like around 9 or 10 in the morning, if you're able to do that. And if not, then anything, uh, any evening around 7 p.m., I'm free, and I can jump on a quick call with you, and I'm happy to do that. So I know because you're working during the day. So if, if either the early morning or not early, you know, early for me is 9. <laughs> so I just know that. But around, you know, like around, you know, 7 in the evening or 9 o'clock in the morning, then to talk to me privately if it doesn't fit in the, the schedule and you're working if you've got a job I totally understand all right so who has a question about uh what we're doing about the three massive mistakes and how to overcome them who has a if you have something you want to share you know i'm happy to have you share right now if you think it would be helpful for the rest of our community you guys are fully complete you're like you're not gonna have overwhelm ever again there's no stress left in our community that was easy wow how fun what else do you want to talk about what are we going to do when we're in the hoya we're going to play and just relax and get massages and walk on the beach all right so going once going twice for questions yeah allison do you have one let me let me unmute you so Hi. Hi. Uh, you mentioned briefly um, project software. You said leaders don't have to do this. Yes. Project yes. software. I yeah. would have a recommendation on that or, you know. Yeah, no, it's a great question. It's such an important question because here's the thing. When you're just getting started, if you can have the discipline to get yourself working in project management software now, I promise you it will be life changing for you in the long run. What I see that's very difficult is for people that haven't used it to go back and retrain themselves and get out of the habits of like email and this and that and like ask me how I know. Like really all the things that I share with you guys of like where don't do this mistake, it's it's only because I literally just screwed it up royally. Pardon my French, right? But it's like only where I really like hit the wall and I'm like, I can't do it anymore. Then I see, okay, great, we need help. And usually again, I, I mean, I am so blessed. We have an incredible team. Gina's, I see her name on here, so I think she's on the call, but we have an incredible team, but we're human. And what I love about project management software is that it's, it's built in accountability, mm -hmm. right? So Asa, look up Asana. It's A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. Let me put it in the chat for you too. Okay. A, okay. Let me see. A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. Look up Asana. I think they have a free version. And if you Google like free project management software, okay. it's going to come up. And most of the, most of the stuff has a, um, Barb, I see you, honey, and I'll unstick you in just a second. Most of the stuff has a um, a free version. Okay. Up until you get to a certain amount of things, right? So, like, we use teamwork for years for a real estate company. And, and, and then we kind of moved things out of that and into another one called Pro Workflow, which I wouldn't recommend because it's not actually – it's kind of techy and most VAs don't know how to use it. So, but say it again, dear. You won't use it. It's it, – Yes, it's, Right, if it's too tricky, you won't use it. So, so try Asana because I know a lot of people love it. And then the other one uh, that has a that I think has a, a either a really low cost or free version is Teamwork. Teamwork. Teamwork, right? Teamwork.com. And just look at those two. There was another one I was thinking about that a lot of people that a lot of people use Basecamp. That's another one, Basecamp. So there, those are three like off the top of my head that have either a really low cost or free version. And I love the idea of you getting yourself in the habit of writing your projects there. And I want you to also write your to-dos, not in a list, but in your calendar as a task. Like write it down, make an appointment with yourself to get stuff done and you'll be amazed at how fast things get done. And I find this too, what I, you know, kind of an up level for me recently that I'm hoping is helpful for you guys is that when I'm doing um, consulting calls with clients, you know, so we have our for-profit clients we're working with our nonprofit, but when I'm doing calls, what I really try to get myself in the habit of doing now is typing out our notes as we're talking. So then they're complete and then I can hit send and then we can get uploaded into project management so that it's their, their fires look complete. So if somebody else like our program director or our client care manager, somebody else needs to see what's going on with that client, the material is there because I've again been the stop in that, right? I would write things out because I like to write it kind of old fashioned. I write it all out and then I got to transcribe it. 
it's never, it's never happening. So just, you know, any place you see yourself get stuck, what's a new system? That goes back to the place where I said, you know, create systems for yourself. The more you learn to create systems for yourself as you go, okay. then it's like, it's like breathing. It doesn't feel like an effort anymore. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Jalen, thanks for the question. Great question. Benefit of your oh, thank you. All right, my pleasure to share my experience. I hope it's helpful. All right, Barb, let me see if I can unmute you, honey. Oops. La, la, la. I thought there was a way for me to do this. Okay, you look like you're unmuted, Barb. Can you hear me? Barb? I see. I'm unmuted now. You are. Good job. See, you know how to work this just fine. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm a real Luddite. Oh, what's happening, my friend? How can I help? Well, you know, I've been thinking that I don't know how to get unstuck. Like we talked about this morning about delegating someone to write audits. Yep. Except in my code of ethics, I have to sign that I'm the only one that creates them. Right. And I'm wanting to move away from auditing yes. because it's getting harder and harder to make a living at it. Right. And the other revenue streams I'm examining are not coming to fruition. For example, I'm working on a course which I think will be wonderful at generating income, yep. except I'm so busy doing audits, I don't have time to write the course. Okay, cool. So let's take a breather. Everybody take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Cause there's a lot, right? I mean, it's really how it is. It's like, well, there's this piece and there's that piece. And there's this, like we all feel you are. And I sent you a link earlier today, right? So I see you made a call. You made, made an appointment to speak with me. I think we're going to talk on Monday or Tuesday this week, right? Coming up. Yeah. Tuesday. Perfect. Okay, great. So what I, I'm going to give you a homework assignment, my friend, if you would be willing to do that. Sure. Be great. So you've gotten really good at outsourcing everything except for writing the audits in your company, right? Mary's taking care of a lot of different things. You're outsourcing marketing. You get those things going on. With the other, there's two conversations. The one is that the other revenue streams need time to get traction, right? You've been in business 26 years. It's not an overnight sensation. So they mm -hmm. need some time and some focus. So we want to look at, and you and I will look at this on Tuesday. It's scheduling time to consistently work on moving those uh, new sources into higher levels of revenue. The second thing is, is that with the audits, when and if we get a, a replacement revenue, so here's the thing, right? We've got all these companies. The reason that I, I, I really believe in multiple streams of income. So if I have one business that's running, I'm always thinking about what would be the next business. It kind of shows up for me. And I'm, that's kind of what I'm doing for fun on nights and weekends. I like creating businesses, right? So I'm working on another income stream, but then I've got to get this current income stream really delivered by somebody else. That's why we hired Anya to be a program director, right? And, and legacy leaders. It's like we have to have somebody else that can deliver the promise if I'm not doing it. So it takes time. It's not an overnight sensation. But if you had another revenue stream, Barb, and you mm -hmm. had you had your consultants delivering the audits, but you were only making $100 per audit, but we had mm -hmm. 10 consultants doing it a day, we'd be receiving $1,000 a day passive income. Mm -hmm. Right, so it doesn't, oh, it's not just about that the, your, your spread, your profitability on the spread of your consultants delivering it has gone down some. Mm -hmm. If you scale up the number we do, we're still increasing your personal profit. That makes sense. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I never know when this stuff comes out of my mouth and it's going to work, but it sounds right to me. But, mm -hmm. I'm, but I know, again, we've been working together for years and I love you and I know that you're willing to try. So let's think about that. Let's talk on Tuesday about how to get it. Because again, I think the scalability of your model, you also have the alternatives of selling your company. But I don't think you're ready. No, I'm not. Yeah, I don't think you're ready. You're too young. I love what I do. You do. So we got to figure out, again, there's a way to have that be more. And you're doing so good with your time freedom. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Well, no, thanks roses. to you and the yeah. systems. Thanks to the systems, darling. I'm just a messenger. So good. Is that help for now, babe? Yeah, it does. Thanks, Laura. Sure. So just be thinking about that. That's your homework assignment. Just be thinking about, you know, again, if it is okay that I had that, but then I scaled the number of consultants that were doing the work, would that kind of replace my income? 
Good. All right. I have another chat question from Glendaline. Okay. Yeah. So Glendaline, I, yes. Is there, so do me a favor, Glendaline, set up a time to have a chat with me because I want to be able to talk with you. Uh, and Allison, I know you need to go, sweetie. So good to, good to have you with us all. Um, so Glendaline, the, the question is, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed about where to start and what to concentrate on. Is there one system to begin with? The answer is yes. Uh, the one system, may I unmute you, Glendaline, so we can talk? Sure. Hi. 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 So, sweetie, it's not Lane is my last name. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's not Glenda Lane, like Glenda. Like Glenda Lane. Lane. No, it is. <laughs> I just made up a name. It was beautiful. I was like, what a beautiful yeah. name, Glenda Lane. <laughs> okay, great. So, Glenda, thank you. Um, so, here's the deal, sweetie. The most important resource that any of us have is our time. So, if you were going to start on one place to focus, I would want you to start on your own personal time and your business time. What is your business? Um, I am a, a coach um, mm -hmm. as well as I see people. So I do that over the phone and then I see people in person. I'm a physical therapist that doesn't really do physical therapy. It's kind of my own, my own thing. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. I love it. So we're, you're, in a, you're in a family of pioneers. We all get it. It's good. Yeah. Good, good job. So for your time management, the piece that happens where it's, it gets out of whack is really, again, we want to bring everything from the unconscious to the conscious. So do you, have you, have you by any chance ever kept a time journal? Uh, I don't think it, no, I'm not okay. sure. This is, this is for most of us triple A's, this is a rather painful experience. So I apologize in advance. <laughs> okay. Okay. But once you do it, you're going to love me. Okay. okay because it's an eye opener. So the homework assignment, Glenda, is to, for three days, if you can stand it, okay. write down everything. Like, so if you wake up at 7.30, write down, I woke up at 7.30, and you're like, you just carry this little book around with you, right? And then I went to the bathroom. And then at 7.35, I went and started the water for the coffee or the tea, whatever you have in the morning. And then I turned on the computer. It was a problem, but it happens for most of us, right? So just write it all down, write down exactly how much time you spend on each thing. And if you can do that, if you have the discipline to do it for two days, you'll be surprised. If you have the discipline to do it for three days, it's going to blow your mind. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because then you start really, again, creating systems. And I have all kinds of ways to help you around systems. And like you're the greatest resource for people that are struggling around time is the calendar. The calendar is free. Right. So we live on Google Calendar, like our whole team lives on Google Calendar. Everything's there. It's attached to my telephone. You know, I write everything down. It's, it's like, it's a living, breathing document. With that, if, if that one went away, we'd be in trouble. We used to do it old-fashioned, like, you know, the daytimers. I don't know if you're old enough to know about daytimers, but you used to Yeah, I still have one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to translate that to my business manager at yeah. the time. Like my business manager was living for 10 years in that old system. And, you know, clearly there were some problems. So technology makes it good, right? It makes it a little easier. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. All right. So any other questions? Let's see. Miss Allison had to go. All right, here. Uh, starting out, I have to keep changing parts of my idea to suit the market I'm targeting. I got overwhelmed. I had to step back and restart with small engine group. Okay, great. Yeah, la, la, da, da, da. Okay, good. All right, perfect. So, um, Abasiyama, I'm so happy to have a chat with you, sweetie, and talk about it privately. But if I may share that, I think it is a very normal thing in business to start with one idea and do the best we can with what we see there. And then, you know, it's been my experience that every business I've ever owned, we did the best we could at the time. And then God has another plan. Like the business starts taking on a life of its own. So I encourage you to continue to follow the revenue and the engagement, right? So if you if things start being like, mm, I'm not sure if I'm on the, right, on the right track, that's a great place to use me. You know, use me to help you get honed. And then the challenge, you, you remember that the number one challenge for entrepreneurs that causes overwhelm is distractions. A lot of times we have to ask ourselves when something else comes in, is this actually a distraction? Am I really, have I truly had the discipline to build out mastery in a certain area with a certain product or service? And the answer is usually no. Usually, again, we get a little bored, we get sidetracked. And I don't know if that's happened for you. I'm just saying this is what's happened to a lot of our entrepreneurs. So, and for myself, it's kind of like, ugh. You know, one of the reasons I got very adept at building systems and businesses is because I knew early on, I love the creativity part. 
I love the development, I love the design, I love all of that piece, but I don't love day-to-day -day operations. So I would create amazing teams immediately to do operations to deliver the promise. So I could do the creation part, right? So we wanna find that for you in your own because you probably have, can I unmute you, sweetie? Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Good, thank you, thank you. What time is it there? It's um, almost 10 p.m. Oh my goodness, you need to go to bed. <laughs> So, yeah, will you do me a favor, honey, and, and uh, send me a quick email and let's figure out if we can get a morning call, like on a weekend or something, that we can talk some more? No problem, I will. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And, you know, just keep, keep up the good work. I think that's the pieces of what I'm saying is that it's easy to get distracted for all of us. And if you had to have a shift because there was, uh, you weren't generating revenue or there was some kind of breakdown, then let's talk about that privately. But I think that, um, you know, you're on the right track with your leadership. You really are. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for the work you're doing. It's awesome. Thank you. Good. I'll look forward to chatting with you again, Doll. No, thank you very much. Uh, beautiful. And, and kiss your babies. She has a little baby. Uh, yes, so good. All right, so any other questions, my friends? Because if not, I'm going to be uh, hitting the road here. And please, please, please reach out to me personally if you want to have a telephone conversation. It's my pleasure to chat with you. It's you know, what I'm made for, and I love being in creation with you about your business and supporting you as you're growing. And uh, if you want to come play with us at Flow in June, we'd love to have you be with us there if that's something that's, uh, you know, on your radar. Uh, we do three live events each year. Flow is coming up in June in La Jolla, and that's women's only. We have some men that are very upset about this women's only event. Um, it's because it's, you know, when we're talking about finance, we're talking about money and all the things that drive money. We need to have a really safe, sacred space. So I've just decided it's girls only for that one. And then in the fall, if you want to bring your partners, the men in your life, your sons, your fathers, whoever you want to bring, they're welcome to the Path to Freedom. The Path to Freedom is our co-ed event that is November 3, 4, and 5 in uh, Laguna Hills, Marriott, which is in Dana Point. So that's coming up in November, but save the dates so you can come play with us. Because each time, we, you know, we focus on a different area of business. It, we focus on leadership at Limitless Women. We focus on finance, sales, and marketing, and revenue generation in June. And then in the fall, we focus on team and operations. So it's all very integrated. And each year, we come together and we learn new things. So going once, going twice. No other questions, my friends? If I'm not seeing your chat question, then I'm not uh, knowing that you have a question. Let me make sure I'm not hanging up on anybody. If I do, I'm so sorry. Okay. But I think we're good. Oh, somebody's unmuted. I hear a baby in the background. I have baby envy. I don't know about those of you that are my age, your babies are young or grown up. My youngest baby is 21. I'm so jealous. All right, guys. So it's been so awesome and wonderful. Thank you so much for giving me an hour of your time. And I hope it was helpful and there were some insights for you in the training. And, and again, any personal things you want to chat about, I've given you my information. Please reach out and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Okay. All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye.